Hey guys, it's Dirk again for another weekly podcast. Um, what we're going to talk about today, today, well, throughout this podcast, um, it's going to be like Black Panther. We're going to talk about um the Fergie situation with the national anthem. Um, our usual stuff like what I've been listening to during the week. Um, and some Black History moments for music. Um, probably going to talk about specific artists like certain people from like jazz and R&B artists um, that made like big um, achievements in the genre and we'll go from there so let's get started with our daily wavelength so I've been listening to Love Lies by Normani and Khalid two of my favorite people um I love Khalid. I love his style. I love his voice. It's very mature for his age. So I really appreciate, like, the rasp that he has um, when he sings. And, like, the the way he um, phrases things is very interesting. And it's very unique. So um, that's always great to hear a singer come out with their own style. Um, that doesn't sound like anybody else. Um, and then you have Normani, who... Is from Fifth Harmony, but I've been watching her since X Factor before Fifth Harmony was even created. So I've been a fan of hers ever since then. So seeing her break off and do her own solo project, um, that's like mainstream. And it's going to be on the movie called um, Love Simon. And this movie is about, let me see if I remember correctly, Love Simon. Let me research this real quick just to. Be sure. Let's see. Let me just make sure that I'm going to say all this stuff correctly. Okay. Okay. So it's about um seventeen year old boy um who happens to be gay um. And then he's falling in love with somebody online, and it's pretty much um, just, I'm guessing it's just uh, like a romantic movie. Um, So the song fits very well. Um, um, It's called Love Lies, like I already said. Um, I made a reaction to it um, on my channel, the video, not just the song, but the song and the video. I didn't have a chance to um, just listen to the song and react to it. Um, but when it comes regards to the song, um, the song, like the first thing that hit me was the, um, guitar riffs in the beginning and like the subtle, um, the subtle like synth sounds that were like in the beginning and like it transforms throughout the whole song, which I appreciate it didn't stay in that same area. So like in like around the pre, the, around the pre-chorus of the song, and like the chorus, the um beat um kicks in. Um it's like a very hard like um eight away beat, um has a lot of good sub bass in it. And um just a song like the song just feels good. It's like a very good vibe. Um it's very like you can it's like something that you can chill out to but also dance to, which is something that I always gravitate to anyway because it's pretty much the stuff I like to do if I listen to music. I like to either sing to it or dance to it or do both at the same time. Um so and then when it comes to vocally, um let's break down that part. Vocally, um Khalid is probably one of my favorite like I said before, Khalid's what um I don't know if I said this before on the podcast, but um Khalid's one of the newer artists that I really appreciate. Um, him and Daniel Caesar are probably some of my um, favorite new people that have come out recently, including SZA and um, SZA. Of course, my brain's blinking, but continuing on with what I was saying. Um, Khalid has this like rich, like, like this very mature voice and I don't believe if I remember correctly I don't know if he's 21 yet or 20 like I don't know if he's still like very young or not so 
the fact that he sounds so mature because you sound when you listen to him, he kind of sounds like like probably like a thirty year old. And that's no disrespect. That's just like it's just a very mature like vocal tone that he has and very warm and very rich in certain areas of his voice. Um and he's very con it's very connected, it's very smooth. Um his phrasing is probably what um makes me listen to him most. Um and then you have Normani. Um I've always loved her voice. Um sometimes live she's um it's not always at her best live sometimes. Um, but when she's perf when like she's just in her zone, like you can hear what she's doing. Um, she, her voice is very light. Um, but in this song, um, it's, it's a lot richer than it usually is. So I'm very interested to see what, like um, evolution her voice is going to go into. Um, she's still, and she has a very agile voice as well. Um, she can go, she's one of the, um, younger artists that are able to, um, just like Ariana Grande, um, enter into w the whistle register. Um, so she has the whistle register. Um, she's done covers of, um, Solange's Cranes in the Sky, and she actually used that in the cover. Um, so overall, when I think about the song, it's very interesting. Like, I just like the vibe the vocals are just right and let's just and the harmonies between both of them are just really what made the song for me because at first before i heard it i was like i don't know like when i first heard that they were gonna make a song together i was like mm, i don't know i like them both but i don't know how their voices are gonna connect but i heard the song it was like i was shook and really appreciate the song um, another song that has come out recently and then the video um, is Tanache's um, Fated Love. It's like an EDM. It gives me an EDM feel. Like an EDM R&B um, um, feel. Um, I like the song. Um, let me talk about it. Let me try and break it down. What I like about the song. Cause I'm I'm getting like the video and the song intertwined together because I react to um video and the song on my or the YouTube channel um at Millennial Tunes if you guys want to check that out and check out the video for Love Lies my reaction um so like I said it has like an EDM vibe um it's very danceable which is again one of my favorite things. Um, so it's very danceable, um, especially in certain parts. Um, it's another, like, good vibe song, something that you can go to the club and dance to. Um, now, I probably like No Drama a little bit more than, like, this song. Um, that's another single that, um, she put out before. So, when it I still like this song, but I feel like No Drama is probably the better one out of both. I just feel it um, gave a little bit more dimensions of her voice in it because there's a lot of, like, break vocals and, like, it's very, like, subtly used lyrics. It's not a lot of um, use of her voice in this song, so that's why I like No More Drama a little bit more. Actually, no, why I say No More Drama? It's called No Drama. I got Mary J. Blige in there somehow, of course. Um... So, I've been listening to Tanache, Normani. Um, has anything else recently come out that I've been listening to that I can think of that's not like a considered like a throwback song? Hmm, I don't think so. Well, if you guys have any suggestions, like you guys can always like message me at um, my Instagram at DWriter. Um, it's um, D dot W R I T A, and if you guys want to give me suggestions so I can listen to it over, we can um, figure out what sounds like if we have similar taste in music, or if we just have different taste in music. I like I like anything as long as it's good. <laughs> like to be honest, like as much as that, like even though like country is probably not my favorite 
there's still certain country songs on like certain country singers that I appreciate their music. So if you guys have any suggestions, please send them in. Um, and I can listen to them. I might just talk about it on the podcast. Um, so let's get into some of the throwbacks I've been listening to. Um, as usual, you know I'm old, guys. And if you guys watched the last podcast, um, I felt really old because I was with um, my friends that are like younger than me. And they're like grown up now. And it's weird <laughs> seeing them grown up with like jobs and like whole relationships and stuff like that. It's weird to me. So what I've been listening to is a throwback. So it's been going in between New Edition. Um, trying to figure out what album directly. But I've been mainly listening to um, Can You Stay in the Rain? Because that's probably my favorite um, so my new edition, um, yeah, that's probably my, that's, like, top three of my, um, favorite songs by them, um, because I feel like that song just showcased everybody and what made them great for the group. Like, you have Johnny Gill, who's, um, a vocalist that I feel like should have got his due and didn't really get, um... Then you have Ralph, so it's like the two vocalists of the group just going back and forth, just um, just going higher and higher and just letting you know during ad libs that they're there, just making it such a good song. I just love to feel the song. Just old school classic sound. Um, so I've been listening to, and then I've been listening to like old Usher, like his first album, some of like the early 2000 songs like Confessions and um yeah and then especially my boo um since Valentine's Day just passed um hope you guys have had a good Valentine's Day um I really didn't do anything cause I ain't got nobody so I'm just was just sitting in my house listening to music as usual um what else so Usher, I went in, I've been listening recently. I just listened to like some old Tamia. Um, if you guys don't know who Tamia is, Tamia is a Canadian, um, a female Canadian singer. Um, she was, um, she started out in the 90s. Um, then she fizzled out of the industry. Um, she put out an album about, was it an album or just a single? I'm not quite sure if I remember. Let me research that real quick while I'm talking so I'm talking about stuff that's real. Um to me to me to me to me to me. Alright. Okay, so she did release another album, okay. So it's just um her new album um Love Life. I'm not sure when this album came out. Let me research this when this came out but I feel like it's been like had to be like at least at least four years ago at least um but let's talk about some of the things that Tamia has done um and then Tamia is a six time Grammy nominated singer and songwriter so just wanted to get some of those facts um so I've been listening to like if you guys know Timmy, you know um So Into You, um, and then Officially Missing You. They just classic, classic um Timmy songs. Um and then one of my favorite songs by her ever, um, is You Put a Move on My Heart and I haven't listened to that in such a long time. So I just recently got back into that song, so I've been jamming that for like the past few days. Um, okay, so, the album Love Life came out in 2015, so, it was three years ago, I thought it was four years ago for some reason, but, got my years mixed up, it's been a while. Um, so that's, um, Set Usher to me, New Edition, anybody else? Um, oh yeah, so, and then, recently, I got... 
not got back into. But I've been listening to um, Prince again a little bit more. Um, so I was listening to um, I Would Die For You, which is my favorite song um, from the Purple Rain um, movie soundtrack. Um, probably one of my favorite tracks ever. Um, so we've just been listening to pretty much the Purple Rain um, album recently. Um, yeah, so I think that's good for me for throwbacks. Again, if you guys have any suggestions, you guys can hit me up anytime on my social media, either at the Millennium Tones Podcast um, Instagram or my personal one at the writer. Um, please leave your suggestions and I will listen to it. Um, and it might pop up on them if I like it and like we have the same, like I said before, if we have similar tastes, might be talked about on the podcast. And I will shout you guys out um, for suggesting it too. Um, so let's get into some more interesting programming. Okay, so I know, like, I don't know if you, if you haven't heard about Fergie and the National Anthem, I don't know where you guys have been. Um, but, okay, so this is kind of hard for me to go. Oh, this is hard for me because I love Fergie. Um, um, I've been a fan of Black Eyed Peas ever since I was, like, and probably, how old was I when I first listened to Black Eyed Peas? Uh, it's been a while, guys. I'm old. So probably like before, like when they first came out, like um with Ella Funk. That was my, that was pretty much my whole album. Like the whole album I played over and over and over and over and over again. So. Especially, like, during the summertime, it was, like, my favorite album to listen to. Um, so, fell in love with her there, and she did, like, um, Glamorous and Fergalicious and London Bridge and stuff like that, which I was very entertained by, so I loved her, grew to love her as a solo artist. Um, it's sad because she did a national anthem, it was, and to be honest, I, I, I'm not gonna mince words as much as I love her, it was horrible, like, she was just over, like, she was over singing, but it was like over singing in the wrong way. Like she would over sing, but it wasn't like fitting the right notes. And she was going sharp, and then she was going flat in certain areas, and which is weird because most of the notes were pretty much from what I've heard of her singing. That's probably like really where her like a comfortable range for her. So it's kind of weird that she wasn't able to hit the notes like. Um, she usually does. I mean, sad that this is the last thing that people are going to see. Um, um, for now, anyway, of her performing. Because she's performed on um, Tarati's, um White Christmas special. She did a great job on that. Like, I don't know if you guys um, actually watched that. But now it's like they always say in the industry in this period. Um what you did last is what speaks for you, not what you've been doing. So it's, this leaves like a bad taste in people's mouth for Fergie now when it comes to her voice and vocals and stuff like that, which is sad. So I hope she does something um, to come back and just um, let people know that she actually can sing because Fergie can actually sing, guys. I don't want you guys to think of the national anthem and be like, oh, she can't sing. There's days where stuff just happens and people's voices just don't um, cooperate. That's not an excuse. I'm not saying that, but somebody that being somebody that sings myself and again, I'm around artists. We're very emotional people, so it's always it's going to be affected by our emotions as well. Like you guys can tell that my voice is a little bit hoarse right now because I've been singing a lot recently, so. Now I'm trying to rest my voice as possible and just drinking a whole bunch of water and drinking tea and need to start eating a little bit more celery just to clear my voice out. Um, but enough about me. But yeah, so I just want people to understand that sometimes things happen. It's not an excuse, but um, singing is not as easy as people make it look and seem like it's very, it's... You have to be, like, you can learn how to sing, but you have to know how to sing at the same time. It's weird. It's a gift, but 
you gotta train and practice with it. So enough about that. Um, so what I really want to talk about um, this week is a lot of like Black History um, stuff. I didn't get a chance to do it in the last few episodes. I really wanted to and let you guys get a chance to get to know um, the people I had as guests and um, like especially the last um, podcast with people that I went to high school with when we were talking about um, us being in a musical together and like our just how to, that connection is still here, still there today. Um, so I just wanted you guys to get a chance to like experience that. So I really want to just talk about um, Black Panther because I just recently saw that. I just want to give you guys a review. I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but I really want you guys to see it. Talk about that a little bit more later. Um, and this like the many things African Americans have contributed to music. Obviously, they've contributed a lot to um, the whole world, not just music, um, but since this is a music-based podcast, entertainment-based podcast, I really want to make sure that we um, talk about all the achievements African Americans have done during Black History Month before it ends. So, it's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more, um, it's going to be more facts and more stuff like that. I'm going to try and make it more a little entertaining. Um, so, all right, let's get into Black Panther since that's what I really want to talk about right now. All right, so, Black Panther. All right, so, mm, how can I speak on Black Panther? Ooh, the main things I could say, but I don't want to spoil it for you guys, like I said. So, Black Panther. I've been a fan of Black Panther ever since I saw, I saw him in like some old like cartoons, like some old Marvel cartoons. And when I first found him, I didn't know there was a like uh, an African or a Black. I knew of Luke Cage and stuff like that, but I didn't know there was like a somebody like Black Panther. Like, and I don't know if you guys have read the comics on Black Panther. Um before actually um or just know who black panther is um he's a marvel um he's a marvel character um he's an um based on um some uh man from africa um he's one of the smartest minds um in the marvel universe um and he's the king of uh of a place called wakanda Oh, I can talk about what, ooh, such a, ooh, the movie did such a great job of illustrating this. Um, but he's the king, but he's also um, a superhero who protects um, mainly his country, but also helps in like world threats. Like if the event, he um, was with the Avengers um, and stuff like that. And we, um, if you guys want to research him, you guys can always like. Um, Go on Amazon and search for like, especially if you guys want to get into it, um, you guys can read the um, Ta-Nehisi Coates um, Black Panther comics. Um, they're on Amazon. Um, the first two volumes of um his comics, I think, are like ninety nine cents. So that's like a great deal if you guys have like um Android or um. Apple and like you guys have like the Kindle app on on there like you guys can get there for like 99 cents and then get like a sense of who Black Panther is before you guys actually see the movie um the movie ooh felt very great about this movie I really like this movie um so when it comes to the people in the movie let's talk about that so we have Lupita Nyong'o, we have Denai Guerrero, um, we have Michael B. Jordan, who's um, the villain of everything. Uh, so, Forrest Whitaker, we have Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out, um, Angela Bassett, then you have um, Chadwick Boseman being T'Challa, then you have... Um, Sterling K. Brown, who's part of this as well, um, had an interesting part. Um, 
you have Winston Duke, who's um a newer actor, but um did a great job in this. Um, then Letitia Wright, who plays um the younger sister of T'Challa, um who's a big part of Wakanda and um just the science of what Wakanda is about. Um, so you guys can research her. Um, and then we have like people like Andy Serkis, who's in this movie as well, playing one of the villains. And Martin Freeman, who are another actors I like. Um, especially um, just the fact that this is a predominantly black cast and it's a black superhero um, who is a, who's one, just the image of somebody that is one of the smartest minds ever. Um, and then having an African American female who is, um, the lead scientist of Wakanda. So she is in charge of all the science and aspects of science throughout the um, country of Wakanda. So it's just a, it's such a great thing. And then you see black women in such a great light looking, being strong, but also feminine at the same time, which goes against all the stereotypes of African American women and just seeing all um, just a mix of the newer generation of black actors and then the older generation like you have Forrest Whitaker and Angela Bassett like these are like two of especially Angela Bassett um, I grew up watching her movies a lot and then Forrest Whitaker as I got older he's made amazing movies um so just seeing that collection of artists and then just how it was executed, I really appreciate it. The me and there were so many great messages I feel like everybody needs to see. Um, it's just, I don't want to spoil it for you guys, but like it really touched me a lot. Um, and just seeing an uh, African-American hero, especially for the kids, it's very important, in my opinion, that they see um, themselves in a good light instead of seeing all that the media likes to portray, especially about, um, and especially, and then it also talks about um, some. Another, one of the topics it talks about is um, the African diaspora and like the disconnect between um, African Americans and then their um, and then Africans on the continent of Africa. Um, and then it talks about the diaspora as well, including, um, the people from the Caribbean and then Afro-Latinos and Latinas. Um, so it talks about that disconnect, um, it talks about, like, nationalism and stuff like that. It's a very good movie, but it, I don't want you guys to think that it's just a black movie. It's a movie for everyone. It has themes that are very universal and... It just, and when you think, and then it just makes, another thing that just makes me happy about it is that it showcases Africa in a way that it should have always been portrayed as. Like, yes, Africa has places that are, like, run down and, like, corrupt and stuff like that, but that's not all of what Africa is, and it just really showcases all the different, um, the different tribes, the different um, ethnic groups, the different um, colors and stuff like that, just all being together on one screen was a lot for me. Like, I'm going to, I really want to see it again. I'm probably, I'm definitely going to see it again. And you know what I said? Probably, I'm definitely going to see it again because I, lo I love the movie, but I'm still kind of in shock, even while I'm talking to you guys, that I saw it. Because it was like a whole bunch of stuff just hitting me that I've never seen before. And just like literally like lifting my heart up and gave me hope for the future. Um, especially for these little kids growing up to see something that something that portrays them and people that look like them in the, probably the best light ever. And I guess we can talk about... Um, so... Some of the things that this movie has done. So, again, going with Black History. So, all right. 
So Black Panther has I'm on Forbes.com right now. Um Oh, just reading the title of this, it says a four hundred oh my god, four hundred and twenty six dollars six point six million dollars opening makes Black Panther the top grossing film with a black cast. Just that fact alone is is amazing and sad at the same time, but we can talk about that later. Um, so Black Panther. Um, oh great! Oh my god! Oh my god! I'm just I just can't get over the fact that it's. A four hundred and twenty six point six million opening. Wow. Just that fact alone is great. Okay, so Wow. So and then talk it goes into the article goes into um how it's the top grossing film predominantly with a predominantly black cast and talks about um outperforming hits like Bad Boys and like Eddie Murphy's Coming to America. Um And it talks about like the struggle between how um, African American, um, predominantly African American movies, are um, um, supported, and it just talks about like especially like 2015 Straight Outta Compton, which notched up um, notched just 20 percent of its um, 201 dollars. I mean, 0.6 million. Um, internationally, or Get Out, which scored less than a third of its um, 176 million worldwide gross overseas, um, and it just talks about. And there's always been this myth in the industry that um, movies that are predominantly African American would never sell across overseas and stuff like that. But this movie is already breaking records and just showing that that whole. Uh, that that whole idea is just stupid and just it's it's rooted in a lot of stuff that I don't want to get into right now, but it's just rooted into stuff that uh and the movie talks about it as well. So it's just it's such a great thing to see. I just wanted to let you talk about a little bit of facts about the movie, and then let's just talk about the director of the movie, um, Ryan Coogler. Who has done Fruitvale Station, um, Creed? I didn't get a chance to see Creed yet. I really wanted to see that. Um, but I didn't get a chance. I've been so busy. Welcome to the world of a college student, I guess. Um, it's just been, like I said, I'm still in shock, and I there's stuff I want to talk about, but I don't want to give it away. Um, but I'm just gonna try and give you guys some of like the themes I've already talked about, like that um, theme, with, like that. Disconnect between the African diaspora. Um, then it talked about like it talks about like um talks about colonialism. Talks about that. Uh, talks about like national pride and stuff like that. Uh, just talks about so many good things and uh. While it talks about themes that are like very like political and serious, just like funny moments in there, uh, especially from Letitia Wright's character, she's the younger sister of the child in the movie. She plays Shuri. Um, so it's there's there's moments that just bring out the fun of the movie as well, and then like the action sequences are great. Um, I heard like some people review when we we're talking about like some of the CGI things. I didn't really see any like CGI issues. From what I've seen, um, maybe when they re-released it, it was a little bit, it was reworked a little bit. Maybe I don't know, but I didn't see any problems with it when I saw it. So, um, again, it's my opinion, it's my reaction on it, obviously. Um, but guys, please, I keep gushing about it, but um, I don't want to spoil you guys. So please, 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 take your friends, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. Um, your parents, your grandmom, all of them, 
your acquaintances, all of them. Just please take them to this movie. It's not a mo- like I said before. It's not a movie just for African Americans and Africans and people of the African diaspora. It's for everybody because when I feel that this movie innately says universally is that everybody should be proud of where they come from and um, not not change it and not forget it because it's important and we need to accept people for the many places they come from and just um oh so many good things about this movie all right let me get off this topic before i spoil you guys all right so i'm gonna get into some black history moments of not just music but entertainment period um so I talked about some of the stuff early in my previous podcast. Like, um, say we have Lena Waif and Sterling K. Brown, who, oh. All right, so we're going to talk about Lena Waif for a second. I'm going to give you some great information about Lena Waif. Because I really appreciate her work. Um, Lena Waif Lena Waif made history as being the first black woman to win the Emmy for writing in a comedy series, guys. Um, and that was um, during the Emmys, the recent Emmys. Um, and she's mainly known for um, the Master of None. Um, and she wrote an episode um, pretty much just based off of her life. Um, she's done um, recent. I said recently. She's done interviews recently with like the Breakfast Club and she talked about um how that was very personal for her and she didn't even know when she was writing it, she didn't know if she wanted it to be on screen. But um that episode is actually what helped her um achieve this um history making moment of being the first um African American woman to be nominated um for a comedy writing Emmy and then she actually and then she won it. So it's just it's just a great moment. Um, then we can then um, if you guys want to get more into what Lena Waif is doing right now, um, she has a show called The Shy on HBO. Uh, it's a great show. It talks about the um, life in Chicago. Um, it, what um, from her interviews and what she, when she was talking about it. Um, she wanted to showcase um, Chicago in a way where people could get away from the headlines and all the violence and stuff like that and see people as being people that li- just happen to live in a very violent um, area called Chicago. We all have heard that. But it really, even though I didn't, view Chicago as what the media portrayed it as being because when I've been there before and then um they like the media likes to portray certain areas as being worse than they really are in my opinion they're bad but they give it um they like to exploit it and just dehumanize people in a way that I don't respect um so I really appreciate this show and it's just a great story like um she has a very interesting way of making every character seem have like a, a multitude of layers, like it makes the environment seem very realistic and stuff like that. Um, oh, and I forgot, and I really wanted to talk about, especially during this about the Thanksgiving episode, um, why it was so big. Um, the Thanksgiving episode was so big, um, and it was so personal for her, um, because. Lena Waif is um openly um gay. Um so that Thanksgiving episode was her t- like it was about her coming out story. So that's why it was such a big hit and then um in this um article in the LA Times it talks about um it was the quote from um, Lena Waif. It says, um, "It's very black. It's very female. It's very. It's really gay." <laughs> said Waif for the story at a Glad panel in August. Um, 
And then she goes on and says, and the cool thing about this is so many people loved it. Um, and she goes on and still continues, um, when a straight white guy is like, Thanksgiving was my favorite episode. That's when Art is um, doing his job. When he can look at my character and go, I can see myself in her, said Wave. So, a little bit more stuff about her. Um, then continuing on some more people from entertainment, I talked about Sterling K. Brown. And I don't know if you guys have watched um, This Is Us. He's done um, plenty of things before um, doing This Is Us, um, especially the last thing he did before um, going on This Is Us was the O.J. Simpson um, American Crime Story, um, where they talked about O.J. Simpson and the trials, stuff like that. Uh, but now he's mainly known for um, This Is Us. Uh, but Sterling K. Brown, I really love him. So let's talk about um, what Sterling K. Brown has done. Oh, and also, I didn't speak into that. Sterling K. Brown, when I saw, he's also in Black Panther as well, and he plays an interesting role. Um, so another reason to go see Black Panther again. Um, all right. So Sterling K. Brown, so he's an Emmy Award winning um, actor as well. So, oh, Sterling K. Brown has did done a lot for history, um, especially in the last few months. Um, let's talk about. Let's continue this. All right, so be great. My computer would help me out. All right. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to make sure I get all this information correct for you guys. All right, so Sterling K. Brown, he made history um, for being the first um, black TV drama actor winner. Which is just a great thing. Um, he's also won, won, like I said before, he was he's won an Emmy as long as a Golden Globe. Um, and first, let's see, if I remember correctly, um, yes, he won. It's another. It's another groundbreaking thing because he is the first, well, he's the first African-American male to win an Emmy for a TV drama series and win the um, Emmy for it. So it's just, this is another great moment for, like, again, like Black Panther, seeing all these African-American people um, in the spotlight is such a great thing for younger kids. Um... So I'm just going to give you guys a break for a second and continue with some of the people I want to talk about and I'll be back soon. So stay tuned guys and I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so continuing on with what we've been doing, I'm going to continue to talk about some main um, game changers and music. Um, especially Black History Month, continuing on this. Um, so what we're, what we're going to talk about right now is Count Basie. I've been learning um, a lot about Count Basie um, the last few months. Um, I had a jazz class in um, school where we learned about him. And then um, in the current class, I'm in History of Pop Music. We're talking about him as well. Um, so Count Basie is a songwriter and pianist, and he was um, born... Um, his, he, um, died, um, in 1984, um, so, he's considered one of the, of jazz's, um, jazz music's all-time greats, um, he was a band leader, um, um, and pianist, and he was, like, one of the main people, um, that shaped the big band sound of the mid, um, 20th century pop and music. So, Count Basie um, was born in Red Bank, New Jersey. 
Um, he actually has a um, theater named out after him um, in Red Bank. So that's one of, a great thing to know about him. Um, so right. All right. So talk about Count Basie. I want to give you guys some information about Count Basie. It's interesting. All right. So, um. So, Count Basie worked with a lot. I'm going for this, like some of the stuff I know already, but some stuff you guys don't know. So, um. I was guess what I'm telling you. Um, so after um so around like nineteen thirty five, around there, um Basie formed his own band called the Barons of Rhythm with um some of his bandmates um from of uh, one of the bands he used to previously be a part of, which was the um Benny Moten band, um, where it included um one of the saxophonists, Lester Young. Um, we learned about him in jazz. Um, Lester Young was um, one of a great um, um, saxophonist. Um, then you had like people like Jimmy Rushing, and then like he would set up shop to form at Kansas City um, Reno Club and stuff like that. Um, how he got his name? Um, he was like, "This is how he got his name." So for count. So during like a rate, it talks about like him in a radio broadcast of the band's performance. The announcer wanted to give Basie like some name, but they had a little bit more pizzazz. Um, that um was like related to like people like Duke Ellington and Earl Hines. So he just named um Basie Count, and then Basie didn't understand that that was going to catch on so well and be like a form of recognition for him. So. That's one of the things I want to talk about. Um, and he, and when we talk about being, making history. So, in 1958, Count Basie became the first African American male recipient of a Grammy Award. So, when you think about um, people um, in history and you think about stuff like that, the fact that the 1950s is not that far long ago, guys. So that's pretty recent um, history, to be honest. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, but um, Quincy Jones, um, who we talked about in the last podcast, Quincy Jones actually um, played um, with um, Count Basie and like some of the greats um, in the jazz era. Um, let me just give you guys some information about Quincy Jones since I'm talking about it. Um, and I'm sure you guys know a lot of uh, Quincy. Well, you've known about some of the things that Quincy Jones has done, especially for um, artists like Michael Jackson. Um, and he's worked with a lot of artists. And especially, um, speaking of Quincy Jones and working with artists, um, that song that I talked about with Tamia, um, the song... Ooh... What's the name of the song? I just forgot it. Like, if it came on, I would know it and be singing it like a crazy, crazy version. But, of course, my brain's not working. You put a move on my heart. Um, She worked with Quincy Jones to make that record. So, that's another example of what... It, Quincy Jones is just great. Um... So Quincy Jones, like I said, Quincy Jones um, played with like Count Basie and Duke Ellington and stuff like that. So let me go into some information so I can give you guys the correct information and not just talk stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So, like, um, and Quincy Jones was part of um, Count Basie's orchestra. That's why um, he played, um, why I said he played with um, Count Basie. So, they actually released a record um, in 1959 called um, The Pen of Quincy Jones, um, Basie One More Time. Um, it's, then it's like the A track, the A side. Um, there's an A and B side, so it probably is a record. So it has like records on it called like For Lena and For Lenny. Well, For Lena and Lenny. Then it's like Rat Race, um, Quince, um, Meet Baby, um, just certain records like that. But I just wanted to give you guys a sense of, um, where Quincy Jones started and like, how, like, Quincy Jones has still continued to be very influential in the careers of Michael Jackson and other artists, like, to me, like I said, that's a little bit more, um, current and more, like, current to our time, even though it's, like, the 90s, it's still more current than, like, the 60s and stuff for younger people. So, just to give you guys something to look at, remember, so, Quincy Jones started there, was doing a lot of stuff with jazz and stuff like that that's why um he's as musical as he is and such a genius in my opinion when it comes to making music um so i already talked about quincy jones and michael jackson um that's a little bit more like well-known stuff um but i just want to give get more people in there since he's such a big name we'll talk about other people as well so all right, my computer is getting on my nerves. Be surprised. Um. Okay. In such a great place, and now I just lost it. All right. Right where I need to be. All right. Let me give. Get into some of the females. I talked about the males. Let me go into the females of Black history and what they have achieved. All right, so we're going to talk about Miss Ella Fitzgerald, who is a singer, um, mainly known for being a um, jazz blues singer. Um, she's known by um, these titles as the First Lady of Song and Lady Ella. Um, and she's, like I said, she's known as being, like, a jazz and, like, um, blues um, vocalist. Okay. So. One interesting fact is that um, she was she was discovered in an amateur contest. Um, she wanted to become, um, she wants, uh, sorry for missing my words, guys. <laughs> All right, so interesting fact is that um, when she debuted at the Apollo Theater in 1935, um, she was discovered there and then went on to become the top um, female jazz singer for decades. And then in 1958, um, Fitzgerald made history as the first African-American woman to win a Grammy Award. Um, and it goes on to say, due um, in no small part to her vocal quality, um, with her broad range and, like, how her intonation, her intonation, it would be great if I could talk, um, and then it talks about how she would go to win 13 Grammys, 13, ugh, why can't I talk today, 13 Grammys in total, and sell, um, more than 40 million albums, so, just a great thing about history making, and then, um, just a little bit about, um, where she was born, um, she was born on April 25th, 1917 in Newport News, Virginia. So, yeah. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ella Fitzgerald. But there's a song. Um, what is the song I, was, I, used, to, I used to sing? Ooh, what's that song? I'm trying to give you guys some good songs. 
that you guys can listen to. All right, so there's a song where she um sung with Chick Webb, um, and it's called "Love and Kisses," and that was released in 1935. Um, then there's another one where she um put out her first number one hit in 1938, um, and that's called "A Trisket A Tasket," um, where she co-wrote. Um, and then she recorded the second hit of her um, career, um, I Found My Yellow Basket. So she's done a lot of stuff. I'm trying to, let me try and get this. I really want you guys to know exactly what song I'm thinking of. So, um, Oh, yes. This is what it is. Okay. I just want to make sure I was thinking of this song correctly. All right. So, uh, I don't know if you guys are either just um, fans, but if you guys know me, um, like most jazz records, there's a lot of people that have recorded it and covered um, similar songs. Like recently, Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett have done this song, but the song is called Lady is a Tramp. Um, so, Frank Sinatra has done it as well, um, her version is probably my favorite, um, out of all the versions, I feel like I would, I like, encompass the, um, track very well, um, so that's probably one of my favorite songs by Ella Fitzgerald, um, if you guys want to, and then you guys can always check out the other songs too by Ella Fitzgerald, um, you guys don't listen to jazz, you guys are jazz people. Um, but let's get going on to somebody else. Now let's talk about the Queen of Soul, Miss Aretha Franklin. Alright, so I'm, I'm sure you guys know certain songs like Res- Respect, which is one of the um, many songs that she's known for. Um... What she has done for history is, um, Aretha Franklin became the first female artist to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. And then also Aretha Franklin is the, one of the most honored artists in Grammy Award history, winning her 18th honor in 2008. So she's one of the, um, Again, she's the queen of soul for a reason, guys. Um, she started off in a church. I don't know if you guys um, know that. Um, and her father is was a um, reverend. And she started singing in church. And that's where she got, um, she was, you learned how to use her voice and the way she learned how to use it. And also, she's a very accomplished um, piano player as well. But she's mainly known for a singer, for being a singer. Um, and she was one of those people that um, worked with artists like Mahalia Jackson and Sam Cooke. And just wish her more great names for music. Um, this is like great songs that you guys can listen to. Like um, her version of American Grace. I said American Grace. Amazing Grace is one of um, my favorites. Um, And it was so, it's so, that song and single for the album called Amazing Grace um, that was released in 1972 um, sold more than 2 million copies and went on to become the best selling gospel album at the time. And again, another Quincy Jones reference is. Franklin's success continued throughout the 1970s as she branched out to work with producers such as Curtis Mayfield and Quincy Jones. So again, Quincy has been doing a lot of work and helping a lot of people um, in the industry. And then he's also been in 
the likes of such great artists like Aretha Franklin and then Michael Jackson, of course. Um, and then it talks about how she took home eight consecutive Grammy Awards for Best R&B Female Vocal Performance, the last coming for her 1974 single, um, Ain't Nothing Like the Real Thing. So, and then it goes into um, how over the years it's um, gone into younger artists coming in to um, take over the industry and talks about like Shaka Khan and Donna Summer and how that like affected her career. Um, but she's done such great things in the industry and um, she's the queen of soul, guys. You can't take that away from her. And let's get into since I talked about some older pe- some older artists. I want to talk about some of the newer. When did the word value? Some newer artists. Sorry for that, guys. All right. All right. So let me get into some of these newer artists. So this is so I know you guys know Cardi B, me and Brittany, um in the previous episodes were raving about Cardi B. I love Cardi. Um so as Cardi has made a lot of history since um coming out. Um she's done a lot of stuff. She's become so this is some of the things that she's contributed to the music industry. So Cardi is the first rapper to accomplish the um the feat of hold on, please my computer is making my nerves. All right. All right, so what the what she's done is that she's become the third artist to chart um, her first three singles simultaneously within the Hot um, 100's Top 10, making her the first rapper to do so. Um, so the fact that she's won the first rapper and then you add in the first um, solo female act, um, to, and then she's the first female um, rapper in 19 years to top um, Billboard's Hot 100 with um, the track um, Bodak Yellow. And then like songs like No Limit and then um, Motorsport and stuff like that. So Cardi, has she's a newer artist. Um, she's current. So um, that's history that um, I think should be known. And like especially for... So, like, we can always talk about the past and what has happened in the past, but we should talk about stuff that's happening now, um, because there's a lot of good stuff that's happening, um, in 2017, 2018, now it's 2018, so I'm looking forward to seeing more success, um, then we can talk about Chance the Rapper and some of the big things Chance has done for the music industry. Especially when you talk about how his success, all his, all of the success he has um, accomplished. All right. So, a little bit about, about um, Chance the Rapper. I don't know if you guys 
No Chance Rapper. I don't know how you haven't heard any of his songs. Um, but um, Chance the Rapper um, is the first artist and rapper artist and rapper to win um, a Grammy with the Stream Only album. Um, and what's great about Chance and what I love about him is that um, from the beginning, all of his music has been free. He's never sold it um, for money at all. He's never made some money um, pay for it. And then the fact that um, he's unsigned and he's an independent artist, this is such a big, it's a big milestone um, for independent um, artists um, working towards the goal of even just making it to the Grammys, not even thinking about getting a Grammy, but the fact that he was able to do something that nobody else has done recently is a big deal, especially when streaming has become the main um, way that music is consumed. So I'm very happy about this moment, and I just wanted to talk about Chance the Rapper and then like Cardi B, because these are recent um, people, so I wanted to talk about recent things that happened in the industry. So, hmm. Talked about Sterling K. Brown in a wave. Talked about some old, old, old school artists from back in the day that have done and paved the way for new artists. And I talked about Chance and them. So, hmm. I think I'm done with that for my Black History Music moment. Of course, there's a lot of other people I can talk about at the moment. But, um, a little crunch for time. So, what I'm going to talk about, I'm just going to talk about some of the stuff that's been going on this week for me. And then we're just going to end the podcast. And that'll be it. So, I'm going to take a break for a second and then I'll be right back and we'll talk about me for a second. All right, guys, I'm back. So, a um, little bit about me for this week. All right, so this week's been busy, guys. So, there's a lot of stuff going on. So, I don't know if I, was, I told you guys. Um, well, I had to recap you guys about a lot of stuff, too. So, we can talk about that as well. So, this week, so... I don't know if I told you about my class, but I have like an intro performance class. Um, me and Brittany have the same um, class, but it's not, we have, it's the same course, but we don't have the same class. All right, let me speak right. Let me speak correctly. So we both are in the same, in the same course. So we're going to be performing um, around like April 26th. So that's nerve wracking. Um, so we've been practicing over and over and over, but um, now we split up and we recently split up into like groups where we had to like sing a song. So the song that we're doing is like homemade um, dynamite by um, Lord. It's the remix with like Cesar Khalid and um, Post Malone. So that's what we're doing for my group anyway. Um, but we're doing other songs too, but like it's been busy because we've been practicing and it's like a lot of learning songs, remembering songs. And then you have to add in the rest of the stuff that goes in with um, being in a classroom. So it's very interesting. Um, oh, so let me recap you guys. So you guys haven't, I don't really post, I'm so bad at social media guys. That's like, it's very weird. Like, I'm young, but I'm very old school with a lot of stuff. So, I'm, social media is, like, weird to me still. But, so, I recently got a nose piercing. Well, it's like a re-piercing of my nose. Because, um, it fell out. So, I got both both sides of my, um, nose um, pierced. I don't know if you guys saw a recent picture of that. Um, and then, like, you can see it in the reaction videos if you guys are watching that. Um, then I recently got a tattoo. Um, I talked about that a little bit last week. Um, with Eric. Um, pretty much, that's what's been going on. It's been very busy, and my mother is home, so. 
and then I gotta start eating because I have class soon. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that. I guess I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope it was interesting for you guys. I just want to have like a Black History moment. I wanted to talk about um, Black Pan for an accomplishments of African Americans in entertainment and music, um, and then talk about like some hot topics and then some of the stuff that I've been listening to. Again, if you guys want to give me suggestions for people you want me to listen to, if you guys have, um, if you guys want to either be interviewed or showcase your music on the podcast, you guys can always contact me on the Lionel Tones podcast Instagram and my personal page at DRIDA, that is D W R I T A. And please have a nice day. Um, be safe, guys. And I hope you return and listen to me for next week's episode. All right. Bye. Thank you.